So, hello everyone. Um, shortly introduction from my person. I'm Hoher Tikona, Sales Manager for uh, Rampack and Automation in Germany. So it's a uh, very uncommon German guy with Spanish name. Uh, but uh, today we will start talking about a little bit of the journey of the right size packaging, um, which we have the common law in 2030 uh, uh, for um, mandatory for e-commerce and uh, also like every retail commerce um, shipping customers, uh, the, the, the products with only 40% of void, uh, void material. So a shortly presentation about Rampack itself. So Rampack is the leading provider of sustainable packaging and end of line automated solutions. Uh, what does this mean? So uh, we have two business units in Rampack, which it's called protective solutions and automated solutions. Protective solutions, what it means, it is simply everything what is based on paper to protect the goods during the transport in their boxes. So from normal, simple blocking, cushioning and wrapping material up to really complex solutions like cold chain to maintain the food fresh and everything during the transport from the logistics center or distribution center to the uh, purchasing customer. And also we have automated solutions, which uh, we have here one of our flagship products, the Cut It Evo. So it's a automated solution, everything for the perfect fit of package sizing and, uh, and packaging solution, what is mean to reduce and perforize the, the, the packages. And so the products fit exactly on the right size into the box. This is a, a small slide for yeah, our regional footprints. As you can see, it's uh, very, um, the two big regions that we have obviously is North America and, and Europe as we are an American based company, but with a lot of automated solutions know-how from, from coming from Europe. So it's very uncommon for an American company to have all their automated solutions know-how in, uh, in Europe, but uh, we have it over in the Netherlands and Eigelshoven. So it's uh, very close to the German border, like from Cologne. It's the next bigger city to say 30, 40 minutes drive with the car. And uh, so we are globally also in APEC in the Asian regions, mainly uh, currently with the solutions, automated solutions in Australia. So uh, not only about Rampack we want to talk about, so we want to talk about the upcoming regulation, which is uh, coming or prepared from the EU to uh, be active at 2030. Uh, what does this mean for the e-commerce environment? It has simply to say, first, first of all, four steps. First step is uh, that every packaging placed in the market uh, need to be recyclable. Um, what it means is, so if you have still sending products in plastic um, plastic bags, uh, it should be completely eliminated by 2030. Uh, second step, uh, reusability. So every package that we send to the customer or every order that we send to the customer needs to be um, re uh, reusable. So for the return uh, returnments or even change uh, very common in the clothing or, or, or fashion environment. So uh, every box that you send out uh, needs to be uh, reused for the return. Um, recycled contact, uh, content. So every product, even if it's have some small parts of plastic, because we cannot for zero to nothing avoid every kind of uh, filling material or even protective material which is plastic uh, so but there uh, the EU will confirm that every company needs to um, provide uh, or every pro uh, company needs to provide us uh, um, recycled content that uh, has some plastic inside so it means when if, if you have a plastic bag inside it needs to be 80% recycled plastic for example right so very very high um, pushing into the market with this regulation to completely avoid uh, plastic anymore as simply void material that you have in the packages. And 
to be honest, the first three steps is really manageable these days. It's uh, something that you can uh, um, to improve in the company and in, in their distribution centers that, you, that uh, the, com the companies has. It's currently we have solutions for that. But the fourth step is, I think, the most challengeable uh, part of uh, this new coming law or uh, rules that are coming in is the void limitation. So an uh, e-commerce or even transport packaging company needs to um, uh, make sure and ensure that the empty space ratio is not going up more than 40 percent because uh, I can only speak for Germany right now when they make some case studies about DHL transportation or DHL delivery guys currently the average is about 60 percent air transportation what he, what they're doing so it's quite too much when you like see how much emissions are DHL car currently has so he is driving simply air to the customers and nothing more so in this point of view and this number of of of, of or these steps of the of the coming law into 20, 2030 is a really obligation for the for the companies and very ch challengeable because currently there's no solution outside which can guarantee you for 100 percent that you have buy a machine for example that can you um consistently give you less than 40 percent um empty space uh, can guarantee that you are below so normally if you see for example the amazon worlds or even the big e coms when you're simply buying a mouse or even like this kind of stuff um, it came in a very big box and 80% uh, it's it's air so it's uh, now these days maybe some de de uh, depending on the typo of box which is that uh, this product is uh, packaged they are currently also shipping products with a zero packaging so simply the box of the uh, of the product itself putting a label on it and shipping it so but it is um, unprotected to, be, uh, to to say like that so this is the the, the biggest point and um, so uh, currently how is the journey to go over and can be as a company be prepared for this kind of rule or law which is coming so automation is every time um, a topic that we just talking about I think for the last 10 years more and more um, in the logistics I think five of the key expectations about to to get automated is like to have a cope with the e-commerce growth so e-commerce we see with different channels like um, social media uh, even on the web own uh, uh, web interface with AdWords and everything from Google they can increase and manage to have a very exp exponential growth we see we saw like uh, two, ta two talks before of my presentation the company mr. Marvis for example they grow in six years very very big you know in six days in six years if you're thinking about 20 30 years ago that's uh, not not possible so this is one topic that you want to solve if you go to automation you want to to get prepared for that improve sustainability um, it means um, customers are even also require these days or select their um, e-com shops um, regarding the sustainability they have where is the clothes produced how is the packaging arriving um, people simply said okay when I go to Amazon for example in some regions um, I get it next day but I'm very unhappy how this gets shipped because it's uh, too much air inside the un un unboxing experience should be like very uh, good for example in the fashion um, environment it's very important how I zip or open the box or everything so this kind of, of uh, sustain sustainability of boxes that uh, carton boxes to choose or something like that it's very important also for for the automation part to, to be prepared for that also adapt to consumer behavior um, it's a very good point if your ratio is going crazy high on peak sessions summer session winter sessions like Fridays or whatever the people are buying more so with automation you can be prepared for that so um, you also can um, put uh, for example extra packaging lines in, in our case for for the packaging solution for example 
uh, if you have two lines, you can cover one. It's my daily business in the low season. And when I go to the up season, I need to cover it with two machines, for example. Yeah, so when you plan on automation, it's a big investment, but it should be adaptable to the, to the peak seasons, for example. And also one key point expectation is find alternatives to the lever shortage. I know, I don't know really in Spain the situation, but in Germany, for example, it's really important uh, or even really um, a handicap to find the right people uh, for the, the budget that they required even to be qualified. Because companies these days, if you see in uh, like industrial uh, areas, um, the people are changing for two, three euros from I go to Primark, then to envelope the packages, then I go to Zalando, then I go to Zara or whatever. And the people are just working on, around there and, and changing. It's very challengeable then to get the, the person, the right person to even stay in the company and even identify with the company to work in the packaging end of line solution. Then obviously lower the logistic cost. How I lower the logistic cost. Um, some shipment companies, DHL, the, 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 the transportation companies, they charge you on the volume that you have with, for example, high reduction uh, machines. You can reduce the carton very small, so the volume is less. You uh, use less void material. The transport costs are getting lower, um, and you're perfectly transporting or preparing the box to transport the, the goods on a more um, cost-saving um Alternative to say like that. Currently, what the uh, um, what the employees do is simply take the box, put up the products, put up the filling material, the void material, and um, then it's the box L. But I have two, three products only inside, and not choose perfect packaging for that. So, and obviously, this point of automation helps for the upcoming regulations that, that the, the EU is setting up. Um, and one of these points is one solution from Rampack uh, to, to show you around is the Cadet Evo, which I will try to stop in the meantime to step to show you up the steps. So um, this is the machine and in the in the first part you can see like a stamp which is going down to the highest point of the product inside. So what he's doing there is to measure the highest point of the product uh, and transpassing uh, the information to the second step, which is cutting the edges of the cotton, stamping, uh, pressing some, some, some caves in it. So he creates his own lashes for the, for the cotton. So it's a box which came, it's a well, FEFCO type 0 to 100 for the, for the people who are familiar with the FEFCO types. Uh, it's a, in a typical American box with, without lashes. So why? Because we create the lashes, the perfect size to get the perfect uh, fit for the products inside the carton. Then obviously, oh, I skipped one point over there. So let's play it again. So and then we can see the last step where we are folding the the the, the flaps to inside, so we are not cutting it out. Um, we are reusing all of the cotton itself and putting a, a cover on it and gluing it and sealing it, the, the cotton. So why we are flapping the, 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 the lashes inside is because we have, for example, a cotton, when you can see, with different heights. They can give some smaller ones um, where you can see over uh, there, we have some smaller ones, we have some bigger ones. So the smaller ones means some t uh, most of the time that we have products. We have products that are um, very sensitive, small, um, and uh, delicate. So with the extra lashes, when we fold it down, uh, fold it up, it's that we pr give them extra protection from the both because we cannot guarantee that our bigger box come to a smaller box over them, so it gives a little bit more uh, stability and secureness. So, and what we do with this machine for the upcoming law is even to help a little bit into this direction, because how I said, currently in the market, there's no solution which can provide you the needed support to avoid this, or to be under 
40% um, of empty space into the box. So um, now this regulation is like trying to get uh, the, the, the details to say because obviously you saw in, in, in this market that the, there's no current solution uh, that can guarantee that for 100%. But Rampack is a, is a company which dedicates totally uh, in totally with the environment because our slogan is even to, uh, to provide a better world, so deliver a better world. So even with the machines, we are sustainable because the machine parts and everything, you can buy it from every, uh, if for maintenance, for example, or, or, or as something else, you can buy it from local regions. So you need to, you are not really dependent on the manufacturer itself, on us. Obviously for the, for the maintenance of big, this kind of big machines, but um, so also give there some sustainability in, in that point of view from the big machines. And um, yeah, so simply and shortly I'll talk about that. Um, that you see over here the pallet also in the last, um, last uh, um, animation that um, sorry I cannot see the well I will see this that even you can with the perfect redu reduction of the height you can keep even more packages on a pallet so it's also cost saving for you on the point of saving costs that you get more orders shipped with uh, within one pallet yes so there we can see then we get the labels then when we compare the the pallet sizes from the ramp pack reduction to the common um, boxes, so it's really if, if if we say normally if you're using four trucks, you can save one normally in the in the, in the average. Yeah, so uh, this was really shortly said what we have. Uh, we don't have a fancy QR code where you can put like the data on it, but uh, I'm really open to, to if you have some questions or even want to know a little bit more about the regulation itself uh, or even uh, know about Rampack, what we provide um, from our perspective of for this regulation. Um, I'm here until I think 5, 5 p.m. So <laughs> you can ask me around or even uh, check out uh, one of my business cards to get more in touch uh, with us and to see what really bring us this regulation or how we can help to keep this regulation in place. Thank you.